That's not what it's supposed to look like. Let's see. Like we got another one. What is up, everybody? Hey, it's Rob here. I'm I'm still trying to figure out how to use a bunch of this stuff. But good morning. How's it going? Um, let's uh, let's jump in the chat and uh, let me know what's going on. One one I want to start with a with a question real quick for everybody who's who's on so far. What are your plans for after church Sunday afternoon plans? What are you doing? You taking a nap? You grabbing some tacos? You going shopping, grocery shopping. What's going on? What do you guys what are you guys doing after this is done? Jump in the chat and let me know. I think what I'm going to do is go home and make a chicken pot pie, but instead of um, a crust, this recipe uses potatoes and parmesan cheese. So, I'm going to go make some uh, some chicken pot pie so that I can eat it and my kids can poke it with a fork for a half an hour. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good afternoon. Um, but man, good morning, everybody, man. It's good. To, I love seeing um, all the all of the names jump on. Um, some people I don't really know. Um, some people I do know. It's good to see everybody, though. Uh, man, um, this is our second week of being back online. We do plan to be back in person next week. <clears throat> and so um, hopefully, hopefully that's uh that's still going to happen. Keep an eye on social media and all that to, to stay updated on that. Let's see. We got some, we got some answers coming in. Alex is grabbing some brunch. That sounds good. Uh, Mia birthday brunch. Happy birthday, Mia birthday brunch and hair salon time. Boom. 
That sounds like a good treat yourself. <laughs> uh, Hannah, hanging with friends and going to lunch. Awesome. Um, Lane is playing some Frisbee golf and worship. Frisbee golf. Yeah, that sounds like a fantastic. I've never played Frisbee golf, but it looks really, really fun. I think I would enjoy that. I don't know. Let's see. Chad. Chad is on. You got Chad's on vacation. And here he is. You see... You see how much this man loves this church? This dude is on his birthday vacation. He's in England right now, and he's on Facebook Live because he loves you so much. Look at that. But he is going to evening church at St. Church in Hackney, then Hackney Church Brewing Co. Hackney Church Brewing Co. Look at that. Uh, Victoria's going plant shopping. Um, I've seen Victoria's... Um, like uh facebook posts and stuff and she's got she's got a few plants in her in her house i i believe uh lexi is packing yeah uh lexi and jesse you guys are moving up to up to dallas exciting and sad but it's it's the next big thing for you guys that's exciting i'm happy for you guys <laughs> victoria's replacing a car battery <laughs> yay Oh man, that's at least it's not something worse. Batteries are not not too terribly bad. They are kind of expensive though. I mean, it's they're expensive. Sarah, what's going on, Sarah? Um, Sarah's been a friend of mine for for many years. They are going to paint mason jars and create a sea glass look. Doing some arts and crafts with the kids. Aubrey, my daughter is on. Hi, my kids are watching. Yay. How about that? How's it going, kids? Is is the house in okay shape, Aubrey? Let me let me know how things are going there. Um, oh yeah, and Victoria says happy birthday to Mia. Mia, if you guys don't know Mia, I I believe Mia's in Washington D.C. Is that is that right, Mia? Um, and she's just been following us, um, hanging out with the Arsenal since. COVID kind of shut everything down and she's been one of our people that jumped on uh, and Victoria, both of them kind of jumped on uh, our online. They're part of our online family. And um, maybe one day Mia will make it over here. Victoria has been here a handful of times now. Um, let's see. Chris is uh, editing photos. Oh, I've from dream week last week. Uh, Chris is a, is a photographer and I, I believe you've been posting some of those, photos on your instagram um if that's what i'm if that's what i'm catching um yeah jesse we're sad that's but exciting uh, it, it's it's all of that they're moving and um yeah oh so mia moved to washington dc from austin and then now she attends online church in san antonio how about that <laughs> yeah all right well hey that's some fun stuff. It sounds like I love a good relaxing Sunday afternoon. There will probably be a nap somewhere in my Sunday afternoon where I just like close the door and send the kids outside. And um, yeah, we'll eat some food and and hang out. Um, hey, you guys, if if you didn't know, I know I just mentioned it, but a couple of days ago was Pastor Chad's birthday. Uh, make sure you, you hit him up on... Um, Instagram or send him a text message if you have not already. You know, I'm going to throw up his his Instagram here real quick at Chad underscore Baloo. Show him some love. Happy birthday, Pastor Chad. He's he's on a well deserved trip right now. I'm sure they're having a blast over in London. They went to New York and then to London. It's kind of kind of a big trip. It sounds like a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, you guys hit him up and uh, and and let him let him feel the love. Let him know we miss him, and uh, he knows how to operate uh, these things a lot better than I do and all that. But right now, hey, take a minute right now, share this if uh, on on social media. Get some people here. We're gonna be sharing some good news. Um, I I really think that we have some really good news today, and uh, and I would love for as many people as possible to to hear some good news. Um. So let's, uh, yeah, let's jump into it. What we've been talking about, uh, what Chad launched, I think last week was the first message in this series of talks that we're just calling What If. 
And really kind of the idea behind this series of talks, what if, is, um, hey, what if these truths that Jesus says about us, these things that God has done for us, what does it look like for these to become a reality in our life? What does it look like if we really step out in faith and believe what Jesus has said and and what he's what he's done? And and we begin to sort of look and feel this out and walk this out and um and really let these things be you know, who we are. And so we're going to we're going to look into some things. If you it, we really did get the idea for doing this from um on Disney Plus, Marvel has a a series, an animated series called What If, and it just does these like alternate universes, right? Where it's like, "Hey, what if Peggy Carter took a super soldier serum and then Captain America?" I've already lost some of you. Like some of you are like you hear superhero and you just shut off, don't you? Let's let's move on. What if? What what if? Um and I, I think this is sometimes saying what if is is a really healthy ex exercise because ideas look scary. New things look scary. There are these things that we've that we hold for a long time, especially if you were raised with certain ideas for those things to be challenged can be really, really scary. Right. And and our immediate reaction is usually to, to put up a wall and we go and we just shut those things down really, really quick. And so it like I remember when I was a kid there was there was this thing that happened to me and um there was something that looked really scary and I eventually it eventually became something that I that I really enjoyed it was this big giant water slide when I was a kid we uh growing up in Sacramento California there was a water park called a water park called Water World and at Water World one day we went to this like the the whatever year it was their grand opening and they had a new slide and it was called the cliffhanger and the cliffhanger. I, th I think in my head, I remember it as being six stories tall. And it was one of those slides that basically just goes like kind of like straight. It looks like it's straight down. It's obviously not straight down, but it looks straight down. It's just like a huge drop. And I remember walking in and looking at that thing and just being like, oh, like that looks awesome. And then somebody goes, let's go. And I was like, uh, uh. Like, I, like there is, there is no way because I was like, that looks dangerous. Like I'm, if I climb up that thing and go down that side, I'm going to die. Right? <laughs> Have you ever done that with like a, a ride, uh, like a roller coaster or a, or a, um, a water slide like this? So I, I, I did that. I, I was like, I was like, that looks dangerous. There's no way I'm going out on that. So we got up, we go to these other water slides and we're hanging out and we go on the water slides. And then we're kind of every time we walk past the cliffhanger, I'm watching people get off of it. Nobody died. And I was like, OK, nobody like nobody's dying. Lots of people are going down this ride. There's a whole line of people ready to go down this water slide. Nobody's dying. The worst thing that's happening to people is they're getting a wedgie and they have to like embarrassingly pick it out as they're getting out of the water. And so I was like, OK, well, I, I can handle that. Like that's if that's if that's the worst thing. Um, and so eventually I decide like, what, well, what would happen if I did just decide to go on it? Like what, what if, right? Like what if I climbed up there and I got on this slide and I went down and I'm watching everybody go down and I just thinking, well, probably that will happen if, if I, I just have to remember to, you know, clench and, um, you know, try not to get a wedgie and, and go down the slide. Like, let's do it. So we did, we climbed up there. I went with my cousin and we climbed up on the cliffhanger and I was scared to death. St still like doing this, like climbing up there, getting up there, getting ready to go down the water slide. And you know, like they always have a bar and you can like, you can kind of fling yourself down. I remember getting on there and you got to cross your arms across your feet. And I was like, like as slow as I could possibly go over this edge, probably, probably the lifeguard at the top was like, bro, go. And so I go over the edge and I slide down this thing. And for the first like half second, I'm scared to death. And then it was the most amazing. Th it kind of hurt. Like those rides hurt when you hit the bottom a little bit, but it was amazing. We get down to the bottom, pop up, no wedgie. 
And I was like, let's go again. And we did. And we went down this slide. And the thing that I was so afraid of actually ended up being the thing that I couldn't wait to do again. I was like, this, this is amazing. And I'll, I'll be just really honest. That's how a lot of my like spiritual growth has happened. Things that have changed and, and things that I, that I feel really strongly about now were the very things that I was, that I was extremely afraid of at some point. And, and I look at certain ideas and I go, that, that just, it just looks dangerous. I think I need to stay away from that. And so probably um, the, the biggest one, the most important one that I would say looks like a dangerous thing and people often put up a wall and I have a lot of discussions about this is just the simple idea of grace. Grace can look very dangerous. Um, and grace is just when we talk about God's unmerited favor. God is for us. God has saved us without anything that we can possibly do. Like we have this, this gift that we're given and when we look at that and and the gift of God's favor becomes something that um that we just receive for free looks like a scary idea because we always kind of push back and we're like, well, what's that going to lead people to do? What's the outcome of this? When people believe this idea that God just gives them something for free without any strings attached, what's the outcome of that? What's that going to do to people? And so for me, at some point, this sort of long held foundational, I don't, I don't even want to say like it was a specific belief. It was more of a feeling that I had about my relationship with God is, has really been challenged over the years. And one of the challenging verses, Romans 6, 23, throw it up here. Romans 6, 23 says this for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. There's a couple of really important words in here. We know that the words like sin and death, God, Jesus, eternal life, those are really important words. A couple of other words that are really important here are, there's, there's this one, let me see if I can find it right here. But, but is a really, really important word. Um, another important word here is this one. Gift. Gift means free, given. And if you've ever been given a gift that had strings attached, you've probably come to a point where you said, hey, man, like you, you probably shouldn't have just given me that. Like, I, I don't I don't want your gift if it comes with all these strings. But we do that with God. We believe that God has done this and we feel like, oh, yeah, that's totally fine. When somebody does that and they and they give you something, they go, hey, remember I gave you that gift? And so, and and then they want something from you. We see that as being like, man, you're you're kind of a jerk. I wish you never gave me that gift in the first place. But with God, we do this where we go, like, hey, God's given you a gift. And we go, but you, in order to maintain that gift, and and in any other circumstance, we would see that as an unhealthy relationship and even uh, a, like an abusive relationship. But listen to the, so that's, that's this, this, this gift. There's this gift that we've been given with no strings. In this verse, this other word, but I want, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about, about this word. But signifies something here. There's something very big that is signified at this point of the sentence. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That but really signifies the cross. It signifies Jesus. It signifies, hey, there was a problem, but Jesus came in and solved it, fixed it. It signifies the cross. 
one of the words or one of the verses that talks about the 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 cross and what was accomplished it's it says in hebrews it says with a single sacrifice jesus paid for the sins of all time that's a, that's a that's a big that's a big statement and when we put this but in this place with the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life there's something really important happening there and i'll be honest there's there's this thing that that I think really has defined the way that I've understood God probably for the first 35 years of my life. I understood, and I, I can sum it up in this way. I'm going to take this verse and I'm going to flip it around and read it the incorrect way. And this is how I understood God. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord, but the wages of sin is death. And there's always this fear there. There's always this fear like, hey, you better maintain this. And really what it does is it nullifies the gift and it puts strings on the gift. And I, I, I want to illustrate this point just a little bit. I want to bring on some Arsenal family to, to hang out with me here for a minute. Um, so if you guys don't know, these are some of the most amazing people. And if you don't know them, you should get to know them because they're they're super super cool so so here they are taylor and victoria hey good morning what's up Dude, where are you guys so, hi good morning we are in um the back so this is a nice combination of our office and storage and anything else we need it for yeah so if you've been to the arsenal and you see like usually it happens like when church should be starting it's like hey guys we should probably have a quick meeting when the band and kind of the whoever's speaking all goes into that side door this is what it looks like back there this is our this is our little back back uh this is our, it. Our, our closet <laughs> office um, and uh, and this is taylor and victoria uh you guys jump in the jump in the chat and say hi to taylor and victoria they really are um some fantastic people but um, hey, earlier well, thank we, you, Rob. we yeah, love you, man. I mean it. I like everybody needs friends like you guys. I I believe that the world would be a better place if everybody <laughs> had some friends like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria's getting teary eyed. <laughs> There's no crying. I no. <laughs> um, we're all good. Hey, uh, hey, earlier, dude. Um, I wanted to ask. Um, we, we're 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 getting kind of hungry. Do you want to go get tacos after this? What do you? Hmm. Uh, I I honestly would love to grab tacos, but awesome. my afternoon is kind of packed. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's yeah. all right. Cool. All right. all right. Okay. Pause real quick. <laughs> we just illustrated something here. Um. When I put that that sentence, I told them, I said, I would love to grab tacos. Like it seemed great. And you could see that like they were like, it looked like, hey, we're getting tacos. And then I said, but and it just ruined the whole thing. And then I said, my afternoon's kind of packed. And and my afternoon's kind of packed nullified the fact that I would love to grab tacos. And like now I'm bummed and now they're bummed and nobody and I'm I'm not getting tacos. And they're probably like, forget it, we're not getting tacos. <laughs> It's, but so here's what I want to do. I want to try that again, but I'm going to, I'm going to flip my sentence around a little bit and let's, let's see if how the order of my, my phrasing, um, affects our, our outcome. All right. So, Hey, what are you guys doing after church? Dude, what, what are we doing? Um, so I said, replacing our car battery and <laughs> getting tacos. Yes. You got, you need some fuel, right? <laughs> <laughs> you need some fuel. Oh man, my afternoon's pretty packed, but I'd love to grab some tacos. Let's go tacos. Tacos. <laughs> yeah, so see what happened. Like one, like everybody's happier. I saw Winston in the background there. Winston, come up here, buddy. <laughs> He's oh, sleepy right now. His debut. <laughs> um, yeah. So so what happened there is I said. I said, man, my afternoon's kind of packed. And it was like, oh, but I would love to grab tacos. And the outcome is we're grabbing tacos, right? So the second thing now nullified the first. And that's what's happening when we get these verses wrong, when we get this, this message that Paul was writing to the church in Rome. We get it wrong. 
He goes, the wages of sin is death. And he goes, but the gift of God is eternal life. There's good news there. Mm. Well, hey, Taylor and Victoria, man, thank you guys for um, allowing me to to pull you on here and and being goofy with me and hanging out and helping and, and all that stuff. That was fun. Everybody say our say pleasure. Hi to Taylor. And for real, you guys make sure you, uh, you, Much uh, love. if you don't know them, you, d- you want to know them. I, <laughs> I promise you. All right, cool. Uh, thanks, Arlo. I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> oh man. I, I really, I, I like them. Okay. Let me see if I can um, work this thing here. All right, so what we're looking at is this verse, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. What Paul is telling us here is, hey, we know that there's this thing where sin is bad and it causes all of these things, but here's the good news. Here's what Jesus has done. Here's the gift that you've been given is this life. The but nullifies the thing that came before it. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And notice it's not and. It's not like, hey, we have these two equal, equal phrases. No, the but nullifies the thing that came before it. It defeats the thing that came before it. The, the power of sin is gone. But we, it didn't say wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. It says but. And so there's a power that comes with that. So I do hear this a lot. I I hear but a lot when I discuss grace, when I bring up grace. I mean, try it. Mention, Mention grace to any Christian like, man, God's grace is full. God's grace is free. And almost every time there's this thing where people go, but, but. You got it. And and what we do is we circle back around and then we take the gospel and we shrink it down and we make it less powerful. And I want to encourage you to take this, take this anytime you feel these negative things, these things that that say any anything that nullifies or diminishes the gospel, battle that with, but the gift of God is eternal life, but the gift of the free gift that we've been given is eternal life. This is what Jesus has done to us. The fear that we hold on to so often, and the reason that this but keeps coming up is what's going to happen when I actually believe that? What's going to happen when I believe that I'm secure in Christ? What's going to happen if I actually believe that there's nothing I can do to escape God's grace? Or honestly, more often what I get, what's going to happen when they think that? When somebody, because I'm not worried about me, right? Like, of course, I'm going to do the right thing. What about them? Like, they, they're not going to do the right thing. And here's, here's the beauty of, of that discussion when, when we ask that, when we feel that, when we go like, hey, grace looks dangerous. What's going to happen if I lean into grace and actually depend on grace? The Bible tells us exactly what happens. It tells us the effects of grace in our lives. So check this out. Titus. 211. It says, God's marvelous grace has manifested in person. That is Jesus bringing salvation for everyone. So here's one that that is sort of the baseline. We're, We're setting the tone here. God's grace has appeared, has brought salvation for all. The marvelous grace has manifested in person, bringing salvation for everyone. And so if I define grace as God's unmerited favor that is freely given, it can be a scary thing because we go, well, what's it going to do? And watch what grace does. And here's why you should lean into grace, not only because it feels good and we like it and it releases us from shame and guilt, but check this out. The same grace teaches us how to live each day as we turn our backs on ungodliness and indulgent lifestyles, and it equips us to live self-controlled, upright, godly lives in this present age. So not only does grace free you and say, hey, you are secure in Christ, but it changes you, it transforms you, it equips you to live the life that you actually really want to live. Nobody wants to live an an awful life. Like nobody wants to go out and like hurt other people and not love people. 
We want to, but it's hard, right? So when we experience the grace of God, we experience the peace and the joy and the healing that we need to be the loving people that we actually desire to be. Grace actually leads to a godly life. It leads to good works. Later on uh, in, in Titus, it goes on to say it, it makes us zealous for good works. Grace leads to good works. Grace leads to the godly life that we believe that we should be living. It's a love that transforms you into a person who cannot help but love God and love people. So here's what I want to what I want to just kind of throw out today. This what if. What if? What if grace is that full? What if, as the Bible said, the righteousness of God is manifest for all who believe? God's righteousness for you through faith in Jesus. What if, as it says in Romans 5, where sin increases, grace increases even more? What if in Hebrews, where it says, with a single sacrifice, Jesus paid for the sins of all time? What if it means it? What if all sins are paid for for all time? What if in Romans 8, Paul meant it when he said there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus? What if in John 4, when John wrote, there's no fear in love, like he, he really meant that? What if as we press into love and as we trust love, fear is actually supposed to be released? We experience, you, we can't experience the fullness of God's love while holding on to fear. And that's that step of faith that we have to take. In order to experience God's love to the fullest, fullness, we have to let go of fear. And sometimes it looks like that little, like just eking very slowly over the edge of the slide. But at some point, you're going to experience it to the fullest. What if you could experience, as the Bible tells us we can, what if you could experience freedom what if you could experience peace beyond your understanding? What if you could experience inexpressible joy is the way the Bible puts it? Not because of what you do or what you have done or what you promise or what you continue to do, but because of one thing, because of the gift that has been given to you. That is grace and grace has tremendous power. What if, what if grace became such a reality in your life that you couldn't help but love? And that's what I'm asking you to do today is, is ponder that. Like, man, what if, what if I really trusted that? What, like, would you, would you be somebody who's like, Hey, I can just go out and sin however much I want. And I, to that, I would say like, man, Maybe you would, but it wouldn't last very long because I trust the promise that that's been given to us, that grace has power and grace moves us to godly lives. Because when you have what grace gives, you suddenly lose the need for what you're looking for in sin. You, you, don't, you don't need it. It's not, hey, you've been given some grace, so you know, appreciate that and you better not do those things you really want to do. No, it changes you. It heals you. It moves you. It fulfills you. You know God's love. And there are things that you don't need anymore because all you're trying to get to is to some peace and some contentment and some love and some joy. That's what we look for in this life. And when we trust the grace that God's given, we experience that. And you don't have to get it from unhealthy places. So I'm going to leave you with that today. What if, what if, what if you, you trusted God? What if we, we really took what the Bible says? What if we got these verses in the correct order? And instead of saying, you know, but the wages of sin is death. Like we could just put a damper on this whole message and go, but you know, sin will kill you. Or we could say, but this gift that I've been given the gift that is now mine, that I own, is life, and it's mine. 
and it cannot be taken away. What if? Spend some time pondering as you're, as you're out doing those things today, as you're grabbing some brunch or packing or getting tacos or replacing a car battery or doing some crafts. Ponder those things. What, what would life look like if I really just trusted what Jesus says, what the Bible teaches me I have? Complete acceptance, complete security, complete love. Even when my living doesn't live up to a certain standard, I still own this. And what that does is it, it actually expands the greatness of the gospel. That's what I hope for you <laughs> anyway. Uh, so ponder these things. What if? What would that look like in your life? Um, yeah. Hey, I love you guys. And and take some time. Take some time and ponder this. And um, and I'm, I'm so, so glad to, to see you. Um, everybody, especially those of you who are, who are far away, like it's always good to connect with, um, with our Facebook, um, our Facebook family, um, that you guys don't get to, to come hang out in person as much. Hey, my mom's on today. Everybody say hi to my mom. Julia Staniland Clark is my mom. She's on Facebook in the chat. Um, but yeah, man, it, I, I love hanging out with everybody. I'm so glad that everybody jumped on today. Um, you guys are the, the Arsenal family is, is absolutely amazing. And, uh, and hopefully next week we're going to be back, um, in person. We'll definitely keep you updated. Um, it's, you know, we want to keep everybody safe and, and we have this, like we have this online and I feel like we, we actually, um, sometimes it feels like we even have like more community because the people that I don't get to talk to, uh, we, like, I can't talk to all of you on Sundays. Um, but, um, but I get to see your, your faces in here on the chat and we get to like, you can just say what you're thinking during, um, <laughs> like der during, uh, during the talk and, um, and we're all hanging out together and, uh, and I love it. I love it. Um, so man, Again, thank you guys so much for jumping on. Love you guys. We'll keep you updated on the status of our services, but um, we will uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Love you. Make sure you, uh, you reach out to Pastor Chad. Make sure you tell him happy birthday. Make him feel special. And, uh, and go love well, Arsenal family. Bye.